I'm sure you've heard terrifying tales of human sacrifices done in ancient times. Imagine if some of them were real. Surprisingly, solid evidence points in this direction. Human remains have been found in odd places like swamps, but what's the truth behind it? In today's video, we'll be discussing some of the nail-biting, hair-raising, unsolved mysteries of human sacrifice in swamps. Why did the Lindo incident surprise everyone? What happened to the Graubold man? Were they all really sacrifices? We'll be discussing all of these and more. Who knew you could find well-preserved bodies in the oddest places? When you think about well-preserved bodies from thousands of years ago, one of the first things that comes to mind is the Egyptian mummies. The mummification process was an important part of the ancient Egyptian religion. They mummified their bodies using linen wrappings and embalming oil. Finding perfectly preserved mummies anywhere else is rare, but it has happened. It turns out swamps and bogs preserve bodies just as well. These bodies may have been confused for recent deaths, with one even leading to a confession for a 20-year-old murder. Let's begin with the Lindo man and woman. Lindo Moss is a peat bog in Cheshire, northwest England. The remains of what was soon to be known as Lindo Woman and Lindo Man were found in this particular bog. On May 13, 1983, Andy Mould and Stephen Dooley, two commercial peat cutters, saw a strange item on their conveyor belt. When they removed all the peat off the item, they realized it was a preserved human head with a brain, one eye, and hair still intact. As you can imagine, the two called the police. When the cops examined the head, they suspected it could be linked to a murder committed two decades ago. Luckily, they still had a suspect in mind and went to question him. The suspect, Peter Rainbart, claimed the head belonged to his dead wife and confessed to her murder. With the rest of the body unavailable, the police sent the head to Oxford University so they could do carbon dating. It turned out the head belonged to a woman who lived around 250 AD in what would have been Roman Britain. Andrew Mould was not done finding well-preserved ancient humans. A year later, on August the 1st, 1984, he found what he thought was wood in his conveyor belt. When they were taking it to the shredding machine, the peat fell off and it was revealed to be a human foot. Having been through this before, the archaeology department was notified once again. Rick Turner, the Cheshire archaeologist, arrived at the bog and helped recover the rest of the body. This time, the police had no chance of solving the death. It turned out to be the remains of a man who likely lived around the 1st century AD. It looked like he was killed in a strange fashion. There was a blow made to his body, one that was hard enough to stun him but not kill him. There were marks on his neck, showing he was strangled with a cord that later cut his throat. He went face first into the bog, likely from a kick on his back. The horrifying part about this death was that the man was likely still alive when he was thrown into the bog. One clue is that the body was found in the deepest part of the bog. Carrying a dead man through the bog to such a deep place wouldn't have been very difficult. When the body was examined, it was discovered that there was water in the lungs. This gave even further evidence that the Lindo man was alive when he entered the bog. From the injuries, it was clear that the person doing the damage knew quite a bit about the human body. While these discoveries sure were chilling, the next one is no better. The Mysterious Case of the Graubal Man England is not the only place where well-preserved bodies have been found in bogs. In 1952, a bog body was discovered in Jutland, Denmark. Carbon dating revealed it to be a man who was likely alive around the 3rd century BC. When the wounds were examined, they found the throat slit from ear to ear. He was then thrown into the bog, 
where it remained completely preserved for over 2,000 years. There was no evidence of clothing, which suggests he died completely naked. The Tolland man has also left many people confused. The Graubor man wasn't the only well-preserved body found in a Denmark bog. On May the 8th, 1950, Vigo and Emil Hojgaard found the corpse in a bog in Sylkeborg, Denmark. The body was so well-preserved, the pair thought it belonged to the victim of a recent murder. The man was arranged in the fetal position and was about 200 feet away from firm ground. He had a noose around his neck and going down his back. He was wearing a belt made of smooth hide with a skull cap made from sheepskin and wool. When the Tolland man was carbon dated, it was found he was alive around 405 to 380 BC. He was around 40 years old at the time of his death. The Curious Case of Cashel Man A bog body was also found near Cashel in County Laos, Ireland, shocking the entire country. It's the oldest fleshed bog body in the world. Jason Phelan discovered the body in 2011. It's believed to be of a man aged 20 to 25 years old. The odd thing is that it seems his body was intentionally covered with peat after his death. Carbon dating says the man died somewhere around 2000 BC. This makes him one of the oldest bog bodies in Europe. But the biggest question is, are they human sacrifices? Burying bodies was not normal during the times these humans died. The way the bodies have been found suggests they were part of human sacrifices. The Tolland man had a noose around his neck, but his face looked calm. His eyes were gently closed, with his lips appearing as if they were saying a prayer. In the case of the Lindo man, the various injuries to the body suggest they were done by someone who knew how to keep a person alive. The knock on the skull was only hard enough to stun and not kill. There have also been theories that these deaths were punishment for crimes or robberies that did not go as planned. But putting together all the evidence, human sacrifice seems to be the most plausible. These people were lightly killed and sent into the bog as an offering to the gods. Even the last meal they ate before their death suggests it was bland. When the stomach contents of the Lindo man were studied, it was determined to be a barley-based girdle cake. It was also slightly charred. In the past, girdle cakes were used in ceremonies to find a scapegoat. It's similar to picking the short straw. A bag of girdle cakes was assembled. Whoever picked the one that was charred would be sacrificed. The last meal of the Graubold man was also strange. Around 60 different types of plants were crushed together into porridge, along with weeds and 13 types of grass. This elaborate preparation suggests it was part of a ritual. Wondering how bogs preserve bodies? Unlike the Egyptian mummification process, the way we're able to retrieve well-preserved bodies from bogs is a complete accident. The lack of oxygen in the bogs means no bacteria could feed on the corpses. Keep in mind, the acid in the bogs eats away at the bones. The skeletons shrink because of this, so we can't accurately determine the height of the people when they were alive. The acids also destroy DNA, so it's impossible to do any genetic studies on these bodies. But luckily, there's enough information to be extracted from soft tissue. This is how we find out what their last meals were. Creepy mysteries keep us all on our toes. Interested in learning more? Let's keep your curiosity going with a couple more videos, shall we? Here's what you need to know. Check out the creepiest images found on Google Earth. You can also learn about the woman who spent 24 years in her own father's prison. Go ahead, click one, or better yet, watch both, and learn more about the mysteries of the world.
Have you ever seen a well-preserved body? Let us know in the comments below.